Hey, here we are. What is up, world? Your boy is back, Daryl Stinson, with the Second Chance Live show. And boy, do I have a guest for you, Mr. Jeff Olson. Man, you know, we met and connected on Clubhouse. I can't remember what room we were in. Do you remember that room that we were in? Some club, some room, some dark, smoky joint somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's just one of those things where, uh, you know, yeah, he's a former athlete, but the way that he spoke, I could tell he's been through a process. You know, you can tell people who uh, have been successful but avoided the inner work versus those who have been successful and done the inner work. And I could tell by his poise, by his remarks that he made, that he was a person who has been through some things and learned and reflected and has uh, both been successful from an outward perspective but also an inward perspective, which is so important because I knew as a former Division One athlete who was who was good how to be externally successful and hide my inward brokenness from the world. And I could tell that Jeff was not a man that did that. And uh, so really excited to learn from him, his expertise. You guys know how this works. Uh, I'll read his official bio. And then as I'm reading it, I want you to be thinking about your friends, your social media following, your stalkers. <laughs> and I want you to be thinking about who could benefit from this message. And go ahead and click that share button because we want to be generous. Jeff has agreed to just give us his time. And the best thing that you can do right now is click that share button, even if you're watching the replay, because you never know what one insight perspective could help change a person's life. So uh, my friend Jeff is a business and social entrepreneur. After retiring from professional athletics, Jeff had successfully successful stints in the financial and technology industries. In 2000, after a health crisis with his dad, he and his wife co-founded Well Nourished Worldwide, which delivers production, consumption, and distribution of innovative health foods. That's why he looks better than me. <laughs> Jeff is the co-founder of the Metro Denver Health and Wellness Commission, and he's also the co-founder of the Atlas Farms. He serves on boards, um, and he also, what I love about him is he's a two-time Olympian, and he is also, like myself, a TEDx speaker, and he's a three-time national uh, uh, excuse me, national champion, Pan American gold medalist, and uh, he's also uh, a leading advocate for using America's next Olympic bid to elevate global health to higher ground and steward health into becoming a pillar of the Olympic movement. So I love Jeff. He reports that he married up, much like I say about my wife. So we have that in common too, with his incredible wife who has three wonderful daughters. So we're both girl dads and lives happily and healthily in Denver, Colorado, which is a beautiful place. Uh, it's just in Colorado. Oh, God, I guess, dang, it felt like it was like two months ago, but it's probably about almost six months ago now. And uh, okay. it's such a beautiful place, man. I, I attended a retreat there. And I'm trying to figure, it wasn't Denver. Uh, golly, I'm drawing a blank on the name. If it comes to me, I'll remind you. But it was, was a it beautiful, a, beautiful place. Boulder, or was it up in the mountains or Colorado yeah, Springs? Or? It was mountains. It was mountains. And if okay. I say the name, it's, uh, it was kind of like a real cool, I guess there was like some old, bar that's real famous or something there's a few of those out here yeah. now, are there okay i'm gonna I'm the name's gonna come to me and then i'll right. interrupt right. our show for it but right. jeff uh man i love what you're doing man and uh i did have some prepared questions i want to ask you but i also want this to be a little free-flowing so yeah. let me just start with uh allowing you the floor to to give us sort of like the five minute version of the personal story and uh before you do that i just want to say um and i mentioned this in my early remarks that man uh, from from what I know of you thus far, uh, you have my highest respect. Um, I can tell you've done some inner work, and that's important to me, especially for uh, the type of people that we tend to attract in our world um, as athletes who are are trying to figure out what vulnerability is, what weakness is, what how do I share my emotions other than anger? How do I have a healthy outlet that isn't pushing somebody around or out competing somebody? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but when that thing is gone. You go, we got to find different and new innovative ways to do that. And so I love that you have a health and wellness company and that you've done that work yourself. And so uh, I just wanted to throw that your way. All right. So let us know a little bit more about your story and your journey. Yeah. What's my origin story? Yeah. I mean, I grew up in the mountains. I was a, a hyperactive kid before Ritalin came onto the scene. So I found sport, which was good. That uh, occupied my kinetic, my kinetic nature. Uh, I ended up gravitating 
uh, into downhill skiing, which encapsulated, you know, encapsulated being outside, the elements, speed, danger, adrenaline, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I, I kind of did all the ball sports growing up, and um, you know, I was just a, a sports kid. So, um, in the context of of you know that 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 fueled my you know energy and i found i found skiing fell in love with it and it drove me it was my inner anchor it it it, it compelled me um you still there daryl <laughs> i don't know may have lost daryl uh maybe he'll be coming back i'm just gonna riff so uh in any in any event uh you know I, I was fortunate to find a passion that no one could touch. It was mine. Um, it was singular focus. So, you know, as athletes, you all know that. Uh, and it drove me uh, till 29 years old when I had to retire uh, due to injury. I overtraining ended my professional athletic career. I, I thought more was better. Uh, and so I uh, did heavy squats, heavy plyometrics, actually ruined my patella tendon. So I had to step down. Um, just as I was really in my prime and that was hard. But, uh, you know, as you know, when you retire as an athlete or you're looking into retirement, that's a weird time for athletes. Like the identity is all wrapped up in that. So in the context of uh, what's next, when when uh, you're not on the field of play anymore, it was an interesting time. And uh, I did one thing well. Uh, and this is maybe one of the things you can write down. Just I kept moving. Um, the phone stopped ringing. You know, I didn't have a gold medal in my pocket. I know plenty of gold medalists who are floundering and challenged and broke and, um, you know, all that to say, I, I just kept moving. And what I ended up doing is, is, uh, um, I came in, I was, I just riffing Daryl. I was just riffing. We lost you there for a second. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine, man. Oh, okay. I, was, I, just, I just moved myself to, to the bottom. Oh, okay. The computer was acting wonky, and I didn't want it to interfere, interfere with your, your keynote here. You didn't know you were doing a whole TEDx talk all wow. over. Wow, I was right. like, I guess I, I don't know where <laughs> Daryl went, but I'll just keep rolling. Uh, <laughs> no, this is good, man. Keep it going. No, I mean, I just kept moving, and, and I came to a fork in the road where I was going to uh, finish my degree in college. Uh, the college track was not the track of my sport of skiing, uh, as in other sports. So I had a few years left of college that I wanted to finish. And when I got um, kind of the end of my general ed, I, I had to pick a major. And I was like, I don't know, Jack, Jack, you know what about money or business or finance. So I trained my weakness. I, I went to that. That's how I picked my, literally how I picked my degree. I say, like, what do you know nothing about? I'll go that way. So be, I said, practical, learn about money, learn about business. That, But I didn't re even know what an entrepreneur was. I was intellectually ignorant. I didn't know what I did. I was naive, right? Because as a professional athlete, it was, you know, I was kind of living in a bubble. Um, so I, I that was a very practical degree. Got my first job. I ended up working for an investment management firm on on uh, in Wall Street. And so I learned the money business. Um, it, was a, it was a practical tool um, for life. Uh, I learned about the way the world works when it comes to capital and business formation and, you know, investments. And um, but I was traveling about 70 percent of the time. We started having kids that didn't work. The math being gone that much. Uh, jumped into technology for a brief. Brief stint and, and I got into sales uh, and that's a whole other evolution uh, of, of maturing and growing, because when I was an athlete, I thought salespeople were icky. And then I come to find out that. The whole the whole world is sales. If you don't know about that, but uh, that's a whole other conversation. Um, great book called "To Sell Is Human." If you want to tackle that as a, as a book read, um, we're all the business of moving others is the tagline. So I, I did it in technology, and then uh, my dad had some health challenges, as you read in my bio, and um, we were introduced to sort of some health interventions for him. Uh, my wife, as I said, you know, married up, as you said, and and. Uh, um, I kind of followed her lead and been never looked back. And so uh, it's been very successful, very blessed, giving us a lifestyle to, you know, work out of the house, raise our kids, giving me a lot of free time to do other stuff. So uh, now I do some startup consulting and fun projects because I have the time and do other philanthropic stuff. And, but that's the cliff note version of my life right there. You got the, you got the down and dirty. <laughs> Wow. Um, man, talk about if you don't mind, uh, just kind of your your fathers and and because that seemed like from your bio and what I could gauge online, it seemed like a kind of a 
a, a pivot point in a, in a in the sense that now you're getting introduced to other forms of health and because yeah. of what your father's going through. So talk yeah. to us a little bit about how that shifted your life and, and, and what was the greatest lesson and gift that that season of your life gave you? Yeah, you know, in in he went he had he had cancer and you get a lot of armchair quarterbacks coming out of the woodwork, you know, when you're in sort of the white noise during the headlights, trying to figure out what to do. Um, I had always lived a healthy lifestyle. My wife had always lived a healthy lifestyle. Uh, my dad, uh, to a certain extent, um, for his generation, but obviously areas to improve and it was a teachable moment for him but we all come to those teachable moments right um and he adapted right so i'm in this new theme in my life you know we're, we're doing a whole project called our whole conference we're building for 2022 with a bunch of athletes and uh, human performance people called project adapt um but, the, you know, it's not the strongest that survive. It ain't the smartest that survive. It's those that can adapt. Hmm. And a, a, adaptability is coachable. It's teachable. It's accessible to, to anyone and everyone anytime. It's can you adapt? You don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the strongest. Can you adapt? And so he adapted his behaviors, his lifestyle, his ways. Um, and, boy, do we need that in, in the world we live in today. People need to adapt. Um, and they need to, you know, a great way to adapt is to start, you know, like you do when you're an athlete, you play with others that are better than you. Uh, so I put myself on the field of play in business and in life and in social environments and in the context of community. And those you look up to admire in business in the community, kind of like those you admire as young athletes growing up, you, you know, you learn by rolling around with those people. And so um, he adapted. And so for my father, it, it sent my wife and I on a, on a discovery path for him. Uh, and it, 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 it initially um, got my wife uh, sort of launching a side hustle, side gig out of the house because we had started having children. Um, and then she started paying the mortgage uh, with her little side hustle. And I'm like, tell me more about that thing. Um, and I didn't I wasn't looking for it. I, I it kind of came out of left field. Uh, but, you know, if you're paying attention and the antenna are up and, and you're humble enough to um, be curious, I guess I was curious, right? Another character trait, I think, is those people that I admire most is curiosity. So, yeah, so his his health challenge sent us for, on a discovery path, which ended up opening up some doors and we learned some things. And then my wife, you know, through her side hustle in the health and wellness space, get, put us in a position where I could join her full time and leave the job world and work for the man and and you know be independent. So, yeah, man, that is uh, pivot. I'm still stuck there on adapting and being able to pivot is so important. But the challenge that I know that some people face when they hit a crisis like that is being able to see beyond the initial pain and the frustration and the anger of the moment to what it is the lesson is or the pivot they should make or the in your words the adaptation they should pursue what what was it about you was it your olympic background was it just something you were raised with that enabled you to see beyond the pain into the purpose of that moment so we all have like the amateur jeff and the pro jeff and they sit on my shoulder, like amateur bad news bear Jeff, and then like the pro gamer Jeff. And, you know, they're a dialogue there. So, uh, you know, I have fun with the bad news bears Jeff, and I, you know, stumble, mumble, fumble, grumble, and are humbled with the bad news bears Jeff. But then the gamer's like, well, what would the gamer Jeff do? What would the pro Jeff do? So, um, you know, it usually has to do with walking into the light, you know, abundance, love, just playing bigger with the world, right? The world needs you to play bigger. How 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 would pro Jeff play bigger? And and access as an athlete that's a narrative that we can tap back into right and and we understand kind of the difference between an amateur and a pro just as a narrative coming out of athletics so that story in my head kept you know helped me catch myself when i was 
going bad news bears on myself and and uh, you know stumbling and and saying you know wait wait a second you know what would Pro Jeff do? So I don't know if that makes sense, but it works for me and I use it all the time. Is um, um, it, it it helps me get going and stop wallowing. And if I've done anything well in life, is I, I've just kept kept on the field of play and kept moving. And the moment you step off the field of play, and this is metaphorically just in life, um, and you're a spectator and you're and your armchair quarterbacking, you know, your armchair quarterbacking the world, your armchair quarterbacking TV, your armchair quarterbacking this, you know, um, that's generally if you can catch yourself in that moment and say, well, Pro Jeff would actually be on the field of play instead of being a spectator. So I don't know if that makes sense. But. No, it makes perfect sense. In fact, uh, it's something – that I didn't recognize I did as an athlete. Uh, but when I was working in this current business season I'm in uh, and, and learned about NLP, and one of my coaches, Mike Zeller, is, you know, uh, a master at the NLP game. Yeah. And he's, he has you find an alter ego, per se, or a higher version of yourself that tells that lesser version of yourself to take the back seat and lets that higher version of yourself, you know, lead your life. And well, so, it's the angel and the devil, right? That you know, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I got Jeff thing one, thing two, you know. <laughs> hey, Dr. Schuss was on to something, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So you sit on a number of boards and yeah. and talk about, you know, and, and, and that's one of the ways I'm sure you give back. But when it when it comes to selecting the organizations you support. What's your thought process? What are you looking at? This is something that I'm now going to put my time, my know-how, and my network and whatever else you're contributing as a board advisor. What What's your thought process behind selecting amongst many other opportunities to work with the organizations that you're on the board of? Well, when I was younger, and this was, you know, 15 plus years ago, I was just trying to be selfish and network, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I I had I had areas of interest. I had I had things that spoke to me personally um, that I you know I wanted to be a young hustler, right? And, and you know because I was trying to recreate recreate myself after after sport and and I left sport. I didn't hang around sport when I when I quit skiing. I quit skiing. Like I didn't hang around. I, 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 as I said, I, I kind of cut the umbilical cord. And I knew I needed to recreate myself away from that sport. And I could come back to it on my own terms someday. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, I started a ski company uh, last year with Bodie Miller, uh, who is the most su successful U.S. male athlete ever. And, and but, it, but I came back to it 20 years later after. Anyway, so uh, I, I guess well, lost my train of thought. What were we just talking about? We're talking about uh, God. You made me forget. I was lost in ah. your story. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I was lost in your story, and maybe maybe it wasn't meant to be, man. Oh, I know what it was. It was I was asking you about your selection and your thought process on the non. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I was just young. I said I got to plug myself into community, mm -hmm. and one of the easiest ways to do that is volunteer your time to worthy organizations, right? Because People are hungry for that. So um, I did. And it was a great way for me to get plugged into the business uh, community here in Denver. Uh, people with capacity, you know, leaders, uh, just good people, right? And that was initially. Now, 15 years later, um, you know, I've sort of stayed involved in, in many of those. Some I've, I've you know, moved on and, and still stay in touch. But now it's more uh, feeling like I, back then I could contribute my sweat equity to those causes. Mm -hmm. Now I can add some, as they say, wisdom and wallet, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. to those causes now. So, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So a lot of athletes talk about transferable skills, skills that helped us to be elite as athletes that now transfer and help us be successful in whatever endeavor we pursue beyond the game. What, what are one or two qualities or characteristics that you have have helped you be successful that you learn from the game of sports? Well, the first one is curiosity. So 
being a student of the game, like as in my sport, you know, or any sport, if, if, if you're a student of it, you're always curious and fascinated with that incremental discovery, new advantage, new thing, new whatever. It's going to help you level up a little bit. Uh, and that's a never ending process. Refining your craft, learning new technology, you know, getting some some third party instruction, new frame of reference coming at it. You know, you kind of deconstruct the elephant, and put it back together. Uh, and, and so just just that, I guess, uh, curiosity and hustle, you know, translates to life. And then um, uh, I, I think athletes, if they're anything, they are ruthlessly practical and they will do what works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I sort of took that mindset into the rest of my life. Let's and I didn't know what was going to work, but I knew I would, you know, figure it out. Right. So um, because that when that loss of identity happens, it, 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 and I, it took me a decade to sort of find my John Hancock, my signature, my my, my personality, my, who, who was Jeff Olson beyond an old ex athlete? Because that identity, when that's gone, you know, that's a hard time. But I didn't I didn't wallow. I didn't I didn't victim i didn't feel you know i just kept moving man and so uh if there's anyone out there that's wallowing and man just just get moving and you don't even have to know where you're going just start moving mm -hmm. um you you know deep down that you, you know you want to have you know what you, you you know you know the things you want in life but you don't know necessarily how to get there and so um some people are fortunate well okay so big life lesson. When I was a young kid, I knew I wanted to be a ski racer. I knew I wanted to go to the Olympics. I knew I wanted to be the best in the world. And it was singular, identifiable. I named it. I claimed it. No one could touch it. It was mine. But when I retired, that thing was gone. And so I went from having an, a massive anchor or a big sail to no sail and no anchor out in the big sea. Just And so what I learned in that transition is, oh, that's probably what a lot of my friends felt like growing up as young kids. They don't have that thing. Right. They have, they have the smorgasbord of options. We live in the world of abundance and you've got, you know, you, you can do anything, but I had one thing I wanted to do. And so mm -hmm. I learned sort of empathetically that, Oh, this is what it's like to not know what you want to do with your life. Right. Um, and so, and that's most people like I, I was blessed to be given this, inner thing that drove me um and and that passion and, and when it was gone i was like oh this is what most everyone else probably feels like yeah. uh and yeah so so that so the life skill of and then the other thing is um being and and i guess i didn't consciously understand this um intellectually as an athlete but i did it as an athlete kind of like you said you didn't realize you didn't mm -hmm. maybe have the words for it but you did it yeah yeah um it's uh we, we used a lot of video analysis in our sport um we would watch video almost every day and and that that perspective of seeing yourself mm -hmm. um you know you could see things that you couldn't uh, otherwise. And so right. I guess all that to say that the point here is it, it, it revealed a lot of blind spots Yeah, um, that were just plain to see. They were obvious once you saw them. And so I took that thinking out into my uh, adventures, um, being uh, fascinated, curious, uh, open to discovering my blind spots, which I have many. And, but that's, you know, I guess the teachable concept here is you, you know what you know, mm -hmm. right? And you know what you don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to do heart surgery. And I know that I don't know how to do heart surgery. <laughs> but it is that third domain of you don't even know what you don't even know. Right. Like, right. That's where all growth and possibility and discovery and abundance and life opening up and and the world just, you don't even know what you don't even know. And that's yeah. Kind of what playing bigger sort of represents is, you know, it, it's unlocking that blind spot because that's where growth really starts to happen. And when you're growing, you're generally a pretty happy person. Like if you're growing, 
um, that's kind of a turnkey to happiness yeah. in a certain sense is growth. So, Absolutely. yeah. So if that makes sense. Absolutely. I want to uh, camp there for just a second about the you, you don't know what you don't know. And I noticed that with athletes, that is a transferable skill. That is a asset that we have is that you were forced to watch film and face your ugliness. I'll never forget. And I'm sure you have some of your own stories. Uh, but being in uh, I had a very slow get off in football. So like my. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what that means? OK, cool. Yep. So. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that means, it means like you're in this three-point stance, kind of like a track runner at the beginning of a track meet. And then when they hike the ball, that's when you're 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 able to go. And and the faster that you can move in the first, you know, millisecond, half a second, the better advantage you have over your opponent. So I was slow because uh, I was tall and I was popped straight up and you're supposed to move forward. Right. And my coach was trying to get me to understand that, but they didn't teach me that in high school because – you know, uh, my high school coaches weren't the best, but but uh, he comes in the meeting room and we're in our position meeting with all the defensive linemen. And he says, Stenson, this is this is Butch Jones, right? He goes, Stenson, let me show you something, man. You your get off is way too slow. Those guys are going to destroy you, man. So he turns on the film and he goes, let me show you how slow you are. And he puts it in slow motion and he goes, beep, beep, beep. You hear that? You hear the dump truck? That's how slow you're moving. You're a dump truck out there. And then, you know, everybody's laughing and stuff like that. But that developed thick skin in me. And then, well, when, I yeah. got, then when I got in corporate or, you know, higher ed, everybody's sensitive, man. And it's like, you know, we try to do the sandwich thing where you you tell tell me something good, then tell me like the, the constructive criticism, then wrap it up in something good. And I'm like, just give it to me straight, man. Like, I'm, I want to get better. And, yeah. I, you know, I don't know if that – has that been your experience that it's it's usually athletes are really great at constructive criticism, whereas other folks, we have to kind of be careful with the way that we give feedback. I don't know if that's something that you've encountered or not, but. Oh, I'm not oh, oh, oh yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I think athletes. I mean, that's a, that's why a lot of employers like to hire athletes because they do have a thick skin and, and they, they they do take criticism. And it, it and. Well. Some athletes, not all athletes. Um, <laughs> now, so there's and there's two. I've had, this has been an ongoing debate with a, another Olympian buddy of mine. Is we've kind of compartmentalized athletes into two sort of post athlete, retired athlete camps. Okay. Um, it's those athletes that um, were kind of their own twenty four hour coach. They they had they had a team they had a system they had experts they had people but but they were they were coaching themselves and they mm -hmm. so they were a self contained you know ball of movement and they yeah. took initiative when there was when when they're in the gaps right 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 uh, in the empty spaces and what I mean by that is then there are whole other athletes who just grew up grew up being told what to do and they mm -hmm. just. They just did everything they were told mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and perhaps nothing more. Mm. And uh, you mm. can go very far if you have great coaching mm -hmm. by just following and doing everything you were told what to do. Right. But it, it's it's pretty obvious to understand that, that to be the best in the world, you need both. Right. And so um, great coaching and that, that, uh, and, and so what that translates out after post-athletic career is, is, and this is anecdotal, I don't have any science on this, but those that take the initiative and those that are, you know, sort of more, more kind of captains, they don't need to be told what to do. They go do. Um, I realized after about six, seven, eight years in the corporate world, I was like, there's a lot of mediocrity in business. And, and it's like, I think I could do this business thing on my own. Like, and so the entrepreneurial thing kicked into my brain. I was like, I, I would rather, because, because as an individual sport, right. I was like, Oh, okay. Like, but that's a, that's another learning that I had is, is it's one thing to lead yourself. It's another thing to lead others. And that's a whole different conversation, but yeah. So the, so the, I guess the, the teachable thing is it, um, were you all, were, were you an athlete that was always being just told exactly what to do and that's what you did or were you an athlete that was told what to do but you actually did 
other things or work thought outside the box a little or yeah. yeah. And so all that to say, you know, um, I have been an entrepreneur now with my wife for 15, you know, plus years. And I can't imagine going back to a job, uh, which, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just not for me. Right. 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 Um, um, and so, uh, you know, the, the, I didn't know what an entrepreneur was when I retired and, yeah. and I was so ignorant and so naive and, and, and what I've learned in a certain way, athletes are, are entrepreneurs on the field of play in yeah. your sport. They're, they're entrepreneurial. And what does an entrepreneur do? You know, they do everything required and everything mm -hmm. necessary, to, you know, um, and ethically, you know, yeah, um, yeah. within the lines, but, but, but. Athletes are entrepreneurs on a, on the field of play, and entrepreneurs are actually athletes on the field of play of business. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah so, the, I guess the kind of ending the this segment maybe on what I took from skiing. The other thing that I didn't know at the time, but I, I've come to realize is a a, a pretty profound um, life skill is. As I say, I, I had ten thousand hours dancing and playing and and uh, um, jousting with fear in my sport of downhill ski racing. Mm. Um, 70, 80 miles an hour. Um, I've saw, I've seen people die in front of my eyes, crashing, um, crashing at that speed. You know, it's a lot can be a lot of physical damage. You know, I've had thirteen surgeries and eighteen broken bones, and um, you know, so so the being able to, 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 to dance and play alongside fear and work with fear and have fear focus you and fear elevate you. And, and um, I, I didn't, you know, that was just part of the thing, part, part of the adrenaline rush when you're young in your twenties. Um, but in height, but now looking back, it's like, Oh, okay. I, I, I learned about, I learned how to basically, ah, fear, finally a worthy competitor like mm -hmm. that. And, and that's not what most people grow up with is learning how to master fear. Right. Uh, and that's what I've in my I guess my business experience is most people, employees, entrepreneurs are stopped by fear mm. or or or, or uh, disabled by fear or disarmed by fear. And yeah, um, fear stops a lot. Fear stops more dreams than than, uh, you know, failing ever did. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true, man. Fear. Fear is one of those things that keeps so many people from moving forward and keep you from making sales calls. You know, I did my TEDx talk on overcoming rejection, which yeah. it, it really when people are afraid of rejection, you know, that's a that's one of their huge fears. You know, that's why people are afraid to speak in public and afraid to make sales calls. And because it's like I, I don't I don't want to face that rejection because there's too much of my work tied to my identity and I can't separate the two. Yeah to know that just because someone says no to it doesn't mean they're saying no to to me as a person and a human being. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm tracking with you. You know, I would like to take just a brief moment to celebrate. Apparently, I am now approved to stream on LinkedIn. About time, LinkedIn. I've applied like a hundred times and I'll, I got friends with less following and less. Right on, man. Congratulations. They keep, they keep getting approved and I'm getting a little jealous. And so I don't know if they were listening to me. I was on somebody else's live stream the other day, and they were like, "Oh, I got love to come on your show." And I'm like, "Yeah, man, I'm trying to get LinkedIn to approve it, and they haven't approved it." Well, congratulations! Thank you. Thank congratulations. you. So you're you're my first LinkedIn live guest, and I see wow. that uh, Monica Miller here says, "Jeff, great advice for any athlete transitioning life after sport. Keep moving." Monica's great, man. She's done a lot of work in the past. Uh, she was once with the NCAA with their after the game department done a lot of work there and uh is uh still doing a, a lot of impact in the world so thanks monica for tuning in on linkedin engaging that's great uh, so welcome cool. to a whole new world man uh from twitch to linkedin we're everywhere i suppose Very cool. thank you deanna deanna says congrats i see you see you right on linkedin cool. um so guys thanks for engaging jeff uh before we head off man um I, i'd love for you to uh touch on what you're doing now and I know you got a lot of irons kind of in the pot, but but what would you like to share in this moment for people that are like, man, this guy, Jeff, is just a, a solid guy. I want to support what he's doing. I want to get in his in his world. Where would you direct people to and uh, why? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you three things. So I, I got a brand new thing, a, a steady, steady Eddie, you know, tried and true thing. Uh, and then. Uh, 
another project that that is somewhere I guess kind of in the middle. Um, I, you know, I'm in the, I'm in the healthy living space. I'm in the health food business, lifestyle business. Uh, I've I, you know I've been circling around human performance for 30 years as a retired guy and and, a, and an athlete guy and um, you know trying to help people live on the right side of their own bell curve. If you know the bell curve, sort of you know your A life versus your B life or C life or D life. You know, try, how do we live on the right side of that bell curve? Um, and so uh, the the steady Eddie thing that you know I've been doing for 15 plus years with my wife is health food. Um, so we have, uh, uh, pioneered some categories in health food or category leaders in health food, um, in the area of functional food, uh, functional food is nothing more than food on purpose. <laughs> um, it, it's really trying to use food as, as a, a, a power tool in the toolkit of, uh, you know, making yourself and fueling yourself and conditioning yourself. Um, and that's really my day job is is the human performance aspects of food and human performance is pregnancy. You know, human performance is better circulation for a diabetic. Human performance is more energy all day for athletes recovery. Human performance is just getting the body better. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and food is probably perhaps the most powerful tool in the toolkit to, to, to condition and fuel and build the body better. So that's my that's my day work, my day job. So um, does that mean I should not eat Chick-fil-A? What's that? So does that mean I cannot eat Chick Fil A? Is that what you're telling well, me? Well, probably not every day. Probably not every day. <laughs> yeah. No. So so here's 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 where the rubber hits the road. As an adult male, minimum servings of fruits and vegetables a day for just Daryl average nine yeah. servings a day. Daryl, you could do nine nine servings, fruit, nine servings of fruits and vegetables every day. That's for just average Daryl. Gee, so so what about like the scoop of superfoods in my protein shake? Does that count? Well, that's good. Yeah. If it, if it's quality, if it's good, if you know it, and and you can read the ingredients, and um, just one, you know, just one scoop though, just one. Yeah, scoop. No, I mean, wouldn't want you to double up. I mean, look, my here's my game. My game is to get more nutrient dense mm -hmm. matter, food matter, into people's bodies. Understanding that if you cram more nutrient dense matter into your body over time, there will be good things happening to your body. That's that's right. just science. So so that's my day job. Uh, and then my brand new fresh thing uh, is we're launching this conference around human performance. Pretty exciting. It's called Project Adapt. Oh. Um, I plan off Adapt. That's why I'm in the Adapt theme of my life right now because it's just a term that's accessible to anyone. Uh, the Project Adapt, and we're looking at the five pillars of human performance around eating, moving, thinking, uh, regenerating regenerative medicine and then technology. So those are the five pillars. We're going to flush them out. Um, so that's a new kind of fun thing. We're working on a, an online conference in the fall and then a live conference in Orlando in the spring of 2022. Mm. Uh, and then kind of middle of the road thing is being in health food business. We also have some really cool, fun ways to grow food. We have these vertical tower technologies that, um, uh, it's called aeroponics and we, we help people grow greens and herbs and, um, uh, vine crops up in towers with no soil. I did a Ted talk on that and, and we have a big greenhouse full of 350 towers in Denver and, and they're, they're residential units. And so that's a, that's another way to help people, you know, eat more good food is help people grow yeah. more good food. Yeah. So yeah, those, those are the things that keep me, uh, busy. And then, you know, uh, I've got some other philanthropic things. I'm helping a buddy start a new company. Uh, he's my neighbor. He got a patented global invention. So I'm blessed to uh, have have some other things that are fun and kicking. And uh, but yeah, if if, if um, you know people want to connect with me, they just go to at Oli up on Instagram or uh, there's my bio link in there, and and you can connect with me however you see fit. Love it, love it, man. Well. You convicted me to eat more vegetables because I am far from nine. So. Oh, dude! <laughs> yeah, we can we can help you level up in that in that domain. I'm gonna yeah. have to go. To, I'm gonna have to go to wellnourish.com and uh, take a look. I, I've yeah. you know since I work with athletes, I get a lot of samples and 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 products, yeah. and I always say it's so hard to tell what's what, man. And uh, yeah, some of the do this. Go, go to my Instagram. Go to my bio link. Yeah, the first link is called. It, the first link is eat. Okay, just click on it. And then we got you. some 
some uh, resources there for you. And, and hit me up if you want to know, want to want want more info. Okay, I got you, man. I got you. Well, guys, yeah. again, let's thank Jeff for coming on. Thank you for everyone that's tuned on, uh, tuned in, on and off. And for those that are watching the replay, we appreciate you. Uh, man, we we probably didn't even scratch the surface of. No, just, we're just getting going, Daryl. We were just getting started of, of just the wisdom. But we did talk about some things. You know what I learned about people of wisdom, Jeff, is this: is that oftentimes people of wisdom say more stuff on accident than most people say on purpose. Oh, and, and, and and when you're a person <laughs> of personal development like yourself, and you've got experience, sometimes you're like, "Man, how much did we get into?" And it's like, "No, no, no." What we call foundational other people think is revelational my pastor taught me that oh, and so 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 you definitely shared some concrete stuff for people to you, we talked about transferable skills we talked about um being able to identify your blind spots we talked about having thick skin we talked about constructive criticism we talked about vegetables nine servings a day we talked about your journey of a very uh defining moment in your life that um, i've seen a lot of people get stuck at the place of their pain and yeah. you talked about the perspective that's necessary to see beyond pain and a purpose. And so these are all great lessons. So, man, I, I know we just crashed, scratched the surface, but there's so many nuggets that if you're just now tuning at the end, I encourage you to go back and listen, listen to the story, listen to the principles that were shared because they're timeless and they can help you move your life forward. So make sure you connect with Jeff. And remember, um, if you guys don't know this, um, we are able to offer our book now for free. So if you're an athlete and you're looking for how do I transition, go over to lifeaftersportsbook.com and you can access it. You just pay for shipping, whatever. I tell people, literally, it's not like a $16.95 upset. Like it's literally, we make two cents per book. So we found a way to do that. Uh, some generous donors made that happen. And if you do want to support beyond that, you just buy the upsells. Uh, we've got I don't know, courses and stuff that you can uh, buy to help with your life after sports and help you to really pivot to your next thing because it feels good to 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 get moving. We talked about that. Jeff said that clarity comes in movement. You're not going to get clear by just sitting there and, and wallowing in, in what was. You have to start moving and trying new things. Took him 10 years. And with our resources, it can help hopefully take you shorter than 10 years. So and I enjoyed the, I, I enjoyed the 10 years. The 10 years was <laughs> discovery and adventure yeah. and fun. I just didn't know who the heck I was, but <laughs> it, it wasn't it wasn't a black hole for 10 years. It was That's but good. after that, I was like, okay, now I know now I know what the rest of my life is now. There you go. It took you 10 years, kind of just find that flow to that. Yeah, flow. yeah, yeah. Kind of like exactly. Sword in the desert till you find the, the living water, right? Like that's yeah, yeah. The only way through the desert is to keep walking. That's so. true. That's true. That's true. So um, there you go. So it's not all gloomy. Not everybody fell into the dark hole like Daryl. <laughs> well, and, and, <laughs> let, let, me, let me just end with let me end with this, Daryl. I, I think it's important. Okay. I mean, there are a lot of people going through a lot of pain, and I, I never want to minimize pain. I know about pain. Uh, most of my pain has been physical pain, not emotional pain. Mm. Um, so. Emotion, uh, physical pain, you know, it, it, it is sometimes lesser than, than emotional pain. Emotional pain can be, you know, extremely traumatic and, and very deep. And so that's where I don't even know. I don't even know is because I haven't walked in those people's shoes myself. And so, but I, but I will say, um, and a wise mentor told me this long ago is, you know, the, the people that you admire, the people that you respect that, you know, the, 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 the your favorite movies of all time or your favorite characters chances are you know being able to imagine yourself being able to share those great stories you know five years from now a year from now 10 years from now we admire those people that have walked through shit pardon my sorry Go Go that it. have walked through hard times mm -hmm. um, those are all the stories that we gravitate to those are all the stories that mean anything to any of us is 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 those stories and so um, you know, it, it, it should just help people that are in the midst of it right now know that, uh, you know, you are, you have battle wounds, you have scars, you have wounds, and someday you'll be tell, able to tell wise stories to the next generation about those wounds and about those, um, um, times. So, yeah, yeah I love it. Um, you're, you're, you're in my lane now. Uh, I often tell people that the fact that you're struggling isn't a sign that you're weak. It actually is a is a proof that you're strong. Oh my and God, you, it's the fundamental yeah. single unifying theme of the universe when it comes to humans. It's yes. 
we all have pain in, in, you know, a thousand shades of gray and, and, yeah. and black and white and all in any and above. And so pain is the fundamental premise of the human condition. So yeah. you're not a yeah. unicorn. That's the good news. You're not a unicorn. Yeah. You're all in that. We're all in this together. <laughs> but it's that perspective, right? So if I were watching right. you train and you're lifting and I see you struggling with weight and you lift it, it's like, oh my God, you're strong. You're amazing. But if we see somebody struggling emotionally, spiritually, and, and they're having a rough time, they're battling depression, they're struggling with anxiety, it's oftentimes not perceived as a person who's pushing heavy weight. But it right. is the same. One's physical, one's emotional. Right. And so I tell people that that the fact that you still find the willpower to get up in the morning when you don't even want to, the fact right. that you still find the willpower to go to work, even though you feel like, man, I'm making minimum wage, the fact that you find a way to keep going when the going yeah. gets tough, it's evidence that you're actually stronger than what you think you are. So I, I absolutely so, that was a, a phenomenal way to end. I'm glad you 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 went there. So guys, well, uh, and the, the final yeah. thing is mentors helped me. Mentors helped me. And so oh, yeah. If you don't have mentors in your life, there's an invitation to the treasure hunt right there. Go get yeah. some mentors. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mentors have changed my life. And uh, find somebody. Reach out to Jeff. Reach out to yeah. myself. Reach out absolutely. to people in your network. You never know until you ask. That's right. Uh, and that's what David Meltzer taught me. He said, uh, I asked him, what's the what's the you know number one advice you have for me? He said, ask for help. <laughs> that's, and that's straight out of the Bible, man. Ask, seek, knock. There you go. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. Well, guys, we love you. I want you to remember that no matter what you've been through, no matter how many trials you face, no matter how good you were in sports, that your best days are always ahead of you and never behind you. So keep that in mind and make sure you go out there and finish strong. Till next time, peace.